Today I'm gonna be trying out some products that are new. Okay, that is subtly beautiful, very natural. Oh my God, I'm underwhelmed. When you try something new for the first time, just don't. <laughs> What up, baby? Let's do some makeup. I don't have a full face of new makeup, but I've got some new stuff, okay? And I am excited about them. One of which is going to be the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Foundation. I have the shade C10 Cool Deep and W10.5 Warm Deep. So let's see, you know, I like a neutral shade, but I was sent these two. So let's see if either of these work for me. Okay, wow, this is 1119 while on sale. It's originally retails for 1399. There are 47 shades, is that accurate? 47 shades, wow. It's supposed to lock in moisture, provide medium coverage, natural finish, adapts to any skin color and texture. Hmm, super blendable. Let's try it out. And if you tried this, comment and let me know because I'm curious. Starting off with this lip primer because that's a must. Okay. I always do skin first because it just <laughs> flows better that way. This is a NARS soft matte. Let's put this only in the T zone because that is the only area that I wish to mattify. And let's see how this interacts with this foundation. If you're a beginner at makeup or just have some things that you still need to learn, make sure you look at my beginner makeup playlist where I have lots of videos for you to choose from. Okay, so let's do a swatch. This is C10 Cool Deep. Ooh, I already feel like like this will look beautiful on me. Oh, this W1 is looking olive. Oh, I feel like the two of them could work. This is W10.5. They both could work for me. Which one should I use? Oh my God. So which one would you use? Oh, I gotta figure this out right now. All right, I'm gonna go with the C10 Cool Deep because I feel like this will be pretty and we'll see how the look all comes together in the end. And if I feel like it's too red, then of course I'll know for next time to use the warm one. Now I may have taken too much. We'll find that out soon, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is the Morphe E63 brush and cool means that's going to have a red undertone to it. And I normally like a neutral, so a mix of both. Of course, I could mix foundations, but who has time for that? It needs to just work for me off rip. So here I am blending in more pouncing motions because I do want to get the most amount of coverage out of this as possible. I do go over my eyebrows because I like to do my eyebrows differently when I have on a full face of makeup. And if you've been here, you already know. And if you don't, now you know, you know. I'm focusing more on the middle part of my face, then I'll make my way toward the outer part of the face. The key is to make sure that this foundation or any foundation is not caked up around the hairline or the chin, okay? So you, of course, want to have the product there, but it don't need to be sitting there, you feel me? So what's left over on the brush is what I am now bringing to the outer parts of my face. Okay, off rip, the deepness of it is stunning in a way that I like, because you know I like to go darker and then I lighten it all up with my concealer and the whole nine yards. So what I will do is with this concealer, this is Lancome Tanti Dual Ultra Wear in the shade 500. This is, in my opinion, going to balance out the redness in this foundation in a great way. I do see the medium coverage of this foundation. I do feel like I can still see my skin, just a smidge, nothing too wild, right? It's not giving light coverage, definitely medium. And I I like it. What do you think so far? And if you use this, comment and let me know. Now let's blend this in with this e.l.f. sponge, which I just soaked really quickly. And then I made sure to squeeze it out in just the right way, because you still want it to be a little bit wet, but not too wet. I do a video in the Makeup for Beginners playlist, which explains to you how to make sure that your sponge is the way you need it to be, right? Not soaked, not dry just right. And here's what I mean by the highlight brightening up the whole entire face. You see how this is so light, which is what I like. I love it to be this light, right? You see how this is so light that now, once I'm done with all of this, <laughs> I don't know, can you hear me? Once I'm done with all this, it really is going to brighten up the face and not make it look so dark as it was before and not as red as it was before, you feel me? And that's why I like to go darker with the foundation because once I start to lighten it up and then I bring the shadows back in, it just all works, you know? Okay, and now to contour, this is a new product. This is the Milk Makeup Matte Bronzer in the shade Spaced. This I have to say is annoying because I don't know if it's just because it's too hot or whatever, but when I take this top off, 
the inside comes off. So not to waste the product, I'm gonna take what's inside here. Let's use my finger like so, very deep, and then let's apply this nice, deep shade. Okay, so I've got the product in place. Let's blend this out. I'm angling it or like bringing it backward. Now you can argue that I brought this down too, <laughs> too far. So let's clean that up. Nothing else on this sponge except what was already there. That's a very stark line, but we're gonna blend that in, okay? Just by doing this again to diffuse it. Let's hold this hair back and get this contour into the hairline as much as possible. But again, it doesn't need to be all caked up. We're just trying to make this look effortless and seamless. Pounce, 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 pounce to get this blended in. This with the concealer and the foundation looks really, really good. Comment, let me know if you agree. And then I'm gonna use the Sephora 57 brush to bring some of this product down the side of my nose. Left over on the brush is the best way to go so that I'm not taking so much product, right? I do want my contour to show, but come on, we are trying to avoid the line, which you might be like, uh, there's a line right there right now. I understand, okay? We are going to blend all of this out in a sec. We're not done yet you know you gotta just trust the process if you are console on your nose let me know because i always say that this is definitely a technique or a step in the process that you may not want to take on as a beginner you know if you are advanced or intermediate you might do this with a like with a breeze like how i'm just doing it so quickly you might be like horrified thinking what slow down so if you're a beginner and you you know how to just do a little one, two, one, two. This may not be something you wanna dabble with, you know, until you get more comfortable. But if and when you do decide to do this, girl, it just makes such a difference. It just, it just snatches the face in all the ways, you know? Now we're gonna take the sponge, the cleanest part of it, not this side, cause just not right now, but here. It's just a little strange way, but just this section right here, okay? And I'm going to blend the line of demarcation right between the highlight and the contour, okay? Do you see how how now it is gone, all right? Same way here, twisting it, keeping the sponge that touched the concealer in the same spot and the sponge the sponge area that touched the contour in the same spot, okay? And now we are going to turn this over and do the same here, keeping everything right where it needs to be so that we are not transferring the contour to the concealer nor the concealer to the contour area. Do we see? This sun is getting on my nerves, okay? So just ignore that, just irritate me. Do we see that vibe? Mm, 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 mm. I do not have a, a different setting powder for under my eyes, so I'm gonna use this <laughs> tried and true, baby. Huda Glowish Luminous Pressed Powder. And let's make sure that the area under the eyes is not creased, okay? Taking the sponge, nothing else on it. Just going to do this to ensure that my natural wrinkles, which is natural, Right. Just make sure that they have not disrupted my concealer too much. And then now with this Sephora 99 brush, here we go. Before we rest the face, just wanna get underneath there. Okay, now we're gonna bring this down and continue to form that check mark. Hello, brightening the under eye area. This might look ridiculous to you, but when the face is all done, baby, this looks so good. If you're using a luminous pressed powder or loose powder under your eyes, let me know. And this I've just been using because it is just so stinking good black opal, okay? Powder foundation, the shade is around a clay girl. And we're gonna just set, but not just set, um, intensifying the brightness of this other face highlight, honestly and truly. You can leave it, you don't have to use all these powders, you can just leave the skin looking satin, right? In between matte and, and hydrating, the in-between, the comfortable in-between. You can leave it satin if you prefer for your skin to look a little bit moist like that, and that's okay too. I really want to further intensify the highlight because why not? Huh, girl, that's just how I like for my face to look, you feel me? You of course can take a press powder like I just did and you can choose one that is not so light. That's also an option where you will still get the brightness but not as much, okay? I like to do a lot. What I am gonna do right now is I'm gonna take a contour powder, okay? And I'm gonna deepen up this contour, baby. And then we do the face powder. So this is the Elle Cosmetics Camo Powder Foundation. The shade is Rich 660N and this is a an LYS powder brush. I could skip this section, but what it's gonna do is deepen out the contour in the most beautiful way. All right, subtle, dramatic, comment and let me know. <laughs> it's giving dramatic, but in the best way, you know? And 
And now is where I do the powder foundation, which is my face powder. Now, this one I do have a new one of. This is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Matte Velvet. All right, and this is actually the shade 4N74, which matches the foundation in the HD. D skin that matches me perfectly. So this is 4N74 and this is the same. I am gonna use this one. Now it does come with this sponge where you can use to wipe it onto the skin the way that it's done in the promos, the videos that you've seen probably. I don't like to wipe any kind of powder foundation on my face, so I don't use this. But it comes with it in case you want a real fast way to be like wiping it on your face. This is the Sephora Pro Bronzer 80 brush that I just love to use with my powder foundation. I'm gonna try this for the first time. This is is supposed to match my skin, maybe kind of sort of, but I'm really just trying to bring back some color, make everything look nice. This is my first time trying this. I hope it looks good. <laughs> it's looking good, thank you. <laughs> I am applying this in the area where my highlight meets my contour, okay? That's where I'm first applying it very wildly. And then now I'm going over the contour just a little, not to take it away, but to bring it all together, you feel me? And this shade is looking really good. Ooh, now you could use the powder foundation first and then do everything else, but that's simply not how I do my makeup. I use it to finish off the face, not to in its entirety give my face the coverage that it could give if that's what you wanted. Okay, so I'm using this in the way that I like to use it, but know that there are other ways that you can use such a product. I like how this looks. Going back here some more so that my highlight under my cheek isn't too, too much. Like I want it to be there, but you know, I can give it a little bit. Decretion. <laughs> I can decrease it a little bit. So, well, uh, no. This is the part of the face where I will add a little bit more highlight, more the frosty highlight, right? Not the highlight that was under my eyes as a concealer, but more in the frosty realm. This is the Milk Makeup Highlighter. This is the shade Lit. So here we are, another twist off and take off. Okay, good. Oh yeah, there's some moisture in here, but thankfully this one did not come up, you know, like the other one did. So now this I would use on my fingers, but let me just see something above my lip. Let's see. Okay, good. This is buildable because I would think that with what I just did, I would have so much on, but this is buildable. Lovely. Okay, right here, um, padding. Okay, very subtle. Now I'm a little worried that I might end up doing too much. So let me do the finger. I don't want to end up taking off my makeup. Oh, this is creamy. Love. The warmth of the finger will help to get the product to blend more easily. Love, love, love. Okay, good. And then right here, middle of the nose to further highlight all this out. The warmth of the finger. And then the second finger is clean to help blend it in. There were some other shades that were sent to me. I could definitely go with something more yellow, more golden, but this is actually pretty. This is reminding me of the rose ink one that I've been using. I like it. And then this is already highlighted, so no need to even go over there. That's why I love the Luminous Press Powder because it just, look, the face is already highlighted, okay? Here's where it gets a little dicey because I don't use cream blushes. Well, this is a liquid blush, actually. This I'm sure you've seen used by many a people. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Dream Pop Matte Beauty Blush Wand. Now, I remember using the Rare Beauty one, which I know was really, really popular on TikTok, and I don't recall what it was for me. Maybe I just wasn't comfortable. I'm squeezing this into the, into the sink just a smidge to see what happens because I don't want this to splash everywhere. It has this sponge. Oh, okay, you gotta turn it. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, now I'm squeeze. Oh, wow. That popped up very quickly. Okay, so I see the girlies just putting this on their faces, which I will not lie, makes me very uncomfortable. I'm normally a hand and then the face kind of girl. Let me do what I know, cause I can't be following y'all. This is too much. Like this is very risky to me. So I'm putting it on the hands. I'm sure that this is going to look beautiful, but I've got to take proper precautions, okay? That side part of the sponge, mm, taking, 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 and let's start here and go in circles. It does sheer out. Okay, good, cause it was looking really pigmented on my hand and even on the sponge. Okay, I could put this onto the face. It's gotta be workable. If it's not workable, that's where applying it directly to the face is a tragic disaster because then you'll have way too much and you won't even be able to blend it. It just looks ridiculous. Okay, that is subtly beautiful, very natural. It's almost like I can't even see it. It's very subtle. Let's finish the other side. Oh my God, I put it directly onto the face and I think I squeezed out too much. Yo, okay, we don't do this. Wow, it, it, okay, I'm gonna, 
take off some of my sponge. Look, I'm doing different things just for you. Yeah, it is pretty sheer, but it was so wet that I worry that I just took off some makeup, did I? Okay, let me turn it over. This side's clean and hopes to bring this, just to put that down a little bit. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that ever again. Putting it onto my face, it's not my ministry. That's what I mean. When you try something new for the first time, just don't. <laughs> Okay, my hands are a huge mess right now. Definitely remember to twist it shut to the off section and then put the cap on. So I did not do that and the cap was a mess, okay? I think that this looks subtly beautiful. I feel like there's more here than here, but honestly and truly, I want to stop right here because this is already enough for me, but hmm, pretty. I just need to get used to it. Now, let me deepen my contour just a smidge so that this back area looks like more of a gradient. See how it's medium? You can still see some blemishes right here on my cheeks, which I don't like. I like for that all to be covered, so but okay. And by medium, I'm referring to the foundation. Okay, for eyeshadow, I do have this new palette from Milani. This is the 110 Whiskey Business gilded mini palette, all right? But before that, let's prime the eyelid with this P. Louise base. This is the shade Rumor 02. And I've done my brows and I highlighted underneath my brows, which is important. I'm gonna put this on the back of my hand because a teeny bit of this goes a long way. And then to spread it all over my eye, first of all, spreading it on my finger here. Let's just put some on the finger and just like move this along. Let's do that. My nails are long, so sometimes this can just be so messy. But you know what, actually? No, that just worked. I normally try to use a brush to do this, but listen, that just worked. Hold on, we're getting there quickly, okay? Use the finger. Look how it just warms up and gets the job done, okay? I normally do the brush because my fingernails get in the way, but it's been a while since I've used the P. Louise base and it blended very easily. So here we go. More on this side than the other, but it's really fine. <laughs> okay. We don't have names for these shades, but I'm gonna just use an assortment, starting off with these two here. And let's see how that builds up. Get this orange color up in here with the brown to deepen it a little bit. Let's see if we can get another drugstore situation going. Right, taking that orange brown type color and then the brown brown type color, like the true brown. And let's go right up in here, baby. This is the Sigma E61 brush. Now, I won't lie, I wish that this were warmer. Like it's not giving me, I don't know if it's not warm enough, if it's not pigmented enough, I don't know what it is because I did base the eye. It just looks very neutral, almost invisible. Now, this is not coming out the way I would like for it to come out. However, it'll work for someone. It'll work for you if you're a beginner, if you're not sure really how to do this, if you don't want it to look too loud and pronounced, then this will work for you because it's not giving loud and pronounced, which is what I like, right? That's what I prefer on my eyelids. So this will work for you if that's what you prefer, okay? And now all over the eyelid, let's use one of the lighter colors. Let's go really light so it can show. Let's go here because these two will end up, this is white, obviously. This will end up looking white. Let's start here and see how light that shade actually turns out. I normally would use a flat fluffy brush, but I ain't got one in front of me, so we're just using a straight up fluffy brush. It'll do the job, because this is a real simple, soft look, you know? This is looking more gray, so this is more cool. Again, it's just subtle. I'm not wowed, I'm just like, okay. It's giving very subtle. And the drugstore eyeshadow palettes aren't all like this. I'm underwhelmed, but if you just need to practice and don't want it to be so pigmented right off the rip, you will enjoy this. I'm gonna deepen this crease with the other brown, which was more cool. So here's an illustration, again, of why I don't like cool toned eyeshadows to just overtake my whole eye. Because if you look at this, it's giving gray, right? Cool, gray, ashy. That does not flatter my skin tone. It might for you, but it just doesn't for me. And this is why I always start off with that reddish brown shade in my crease and then I build it in to blend into whatever shade I'm using in the crease because I want it to be warm, sunset vibes. You see this? This is giving more of the moon. <laughs> And you might think that this is gorgeous. Like, let's say I had on a gray outfit, a gray dress, gray top, whatever. Yeah, I suppose, but I would never. But let's finish the look with some eyeliner, mascara, and let's discuss the lip. Let's use the L'Oreal telescopic, just just telescopic carbon black, right? This is the TikTok viral one. I bought it after that whole situation went down, you feel me? Here we are. We're gonna get up close and personal. Ooh, it's looking good thus far. I have an eyeliner, obviously, because I'm finishing my face, but hold on a second. Is this the one? This wand looks different. Maybe I picked up the wrong one. This looks gorgeous so far. If you've tried this mascara, let me know. What's annoying is this wand. I don't know if that's supposed to be like that or like this is what makes it great, but it's annoying because getting it in, see how flimsy it is? It doesn't go in well. It's annoying to push in. The wand is flimsy and irritating. So anyway, but 
you know, the mascara looks good. All right, so comment, let me know what you think about this. If you have tried it, I would love to know. You know my tried and true lashes are these ones from AliExpress. I always link them below. All the products are linked below. So make sure you take a look at that link in case you want to buy these lashes. Okay, we're near the finish line. I did the Lawless One and Done Mascara on the bottom lashes. That's my tried and true, right? And I want to use this MAC Cosmetics Locked Kiss Ink. This is the shade Gutsy. Now this is very, very bright. So let's line the lips first with this Rare Beauty Kind Words Lip Liner in the color Strong. This is giving MAC Chestnut vibes, you know, something brown to warm up the lips. Basically giving the lip a contour, you know? And then the shade goes in the middle. And I've not tried this out, so this one's also new. You could stop there. But let's build this up. I want this to spread more on the lips. It feels lightweight, not caked up, not strange in any way. Here's the finished look. If you loved it, like it, would change anything, comment and let me know. Like I mentioned, all products are listed below. I'm linking to pick one to choose from to watch another video. I'll see you next time. Bye.